So yeah, let's yeah. just pick as many flowers as we can get. So yeah, and everyone knows not to like tear up the roots. Just pick the tops. Are you brought a knife? Yes. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay with yeah. Nice. We've doubled the team, a lot of new faces. Um, the time it takes to impart the knowledge that they need is significant. It takes probably double the amount of time to teach them that it would be to do it yourself. Obviously down the line when they adopt the ideas and adopt the flow, then it will make sense, then it works. But right now in, in an opening, what would be 5,000 things to focus on is now 10,000 things because of all of this um, change. I'm really happy to be back after such, so many months. Yeah. And I'm really happy to have a new team as well. There's a lot of ingredients I've ever worked with. Much different from any other kitchen I've worked at. Making uh, three. One is a starter and two uh, desserts. Excited. Excited to uh, finally feel like I'm doing something for the world. Each day is a new chapter in Silo. One of the things that we realised is how much our supply chain is weather dependent and there has been a drought. And so with that drought means no produce. And our main supplier, uh, Flourish Produce, um, Calixta called me a week before we opened and said, Doug, I hate to tell you this, but we, we can't supply you. As it's getting hotter and drier, and water retention is more and more of an issue, like there's less water in general in, in those months when we need it, yeah. what else can we do with like how we plant our farm and manage our ecology here yeah, yeah, to get sure. the benefits that we need to keep being able to grow food? Not like, what are we gonna do to get through this year, but like, what are we gonna do to get through like the next 10 years and the next yeah, 20 yeah, yeah. years yeah. when things get really hard? It's more about the things being erratic, like not knowing, not being yeah, able to yeah, guarantee yeah. I won't have frost after this date. Well, last May we had, I mean, not, yeah, we had a frost in May and like we had to cover like nearly an acre of pumpkins and and squash to keep them protected which is unheard of. So zero waste is predicated on direct trade when you deal directly with farmers you can avoid plastic and therefore you have this uh, very intimate close relationship with a farmer. So Sam and Harry have created a shrub which is a an enlightened uh, middleman service. They have this network of amazing farmers where they they go to on the day and then bring the produce straight up to London to silo. The ways in which uh, you know shrubs different I mean you know almost every way but Hopefully it's kind of like, you know, the ideal veg supplier for those that want to source produce a little more sustainably. And we're quite lucky with the customers we have, you know, Silo very much included in that um, you don't need to upsell that aspect to them at all. We have a relationship with every single one of our growers um, and we kind of, we treat them as much as, you know, like customers as we do our actual customers. We really value kind of what they do and we literally try and work around them in every single way possible to make sure we can get hold of the best produce and establish you know good relationships with them and that relationship you know passes on to the to our end customer as well it's not just a case of us speaking to a chef and writing down their you know their wants and desires it's kind of a bit more the other way around where you know we present to them what their options are celebrate the produce that we have in abundance at the right season. Everything's harvested to order, so when the orders come in on a Sunday night and a Wednesday night, they all get processed. Orders go off to the farms, do our best to procure everything we can, and then process it. Uh, collections of the next day, and then the end of that day, what we're doing now is packing those deliveries out to those restaurants. Whoever the first person that's bringing the food, they're also the person that's then going to talk through the food. Asparagus, blue potatoes, asparagus, asparagus blue potatoes and then when the last dish is down then chow. Creating the formula for a dish we call it dialing in and dialing in a dish at silo can take no time at all or it can take months. Something that in your head creatively you have this spark of that's definitely going to work and in your head when that thunder strike of creativity occurs, you're so sure, you're so convinced it's going to be perfect straight away. Or well, maybe you don't think about the level of perfection, but it just makes so much sense. It's like, of course. Then you try it, sometimes it can land terribly. 
In fact, most times it lands terribly. Sometimes, once every blue moon, it's great straight away. That's happened maybe twice ever. But when you've had that feeling of, oh my God, you know, creative enlightenment, it's like that is definitely going to work. And there is always something there, even if when you first taste it, it's terrible. And then you kind of go on this wild goose chase of testing, testing, testing. And sometimes you go full circle. Sometimes you just get lost down this path and forget, what was I doing? What dish? Where was, where was the inspiration? Um, and then almost every single time, there has been that feeling of there's something here. We do find it with a great deal of perseverance. And the, the first time we did a tasting, uh, two weeks ago, every dish was wrong. Every single dish was wrong. All 14 or 12 dishes were wrong. And then I was very stressed. <laughs> it was very, very stressed. Like <gasps> not sleeping for days and maybe a week. And then we did another tasting. Um, and of the 12 dishes, 11 were brilliant. I was like, thank God, <laughs> thank God. Um, but one of the dishes, I'm still chasing it. I'm still chasing it, like trying to like catch a rabbit, you know, in a field, like chasing it, chasing it, chasing it. I just cannot get it. And it's blue potatoes with the blue cheese garum, or like a fermentation uh, with walnuts. And I know it's there and I'm so close, but it's just not right. It's like sitting in the 80% quality and I need, all dishes have to be 90% plus. And there's no such thing as 100%. Um, but we need, every dish needs to pass that 90% threshold and this is sitting around 80. Um, so yeah, I'm still chasing that rabbit. We've now got 72 on the books. Bookings commence from 6 p.m. We've got half of the table turning and the other half is not. Myself and Henry are gonna be on the floor, which is this section. Stephen is the bar and Iris is the 20s. It makes you psychologically more confident and fierce. And people around you are afraid of you because you're like a bear. I'm a program to be afraid of a bear. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was quite scared. I can tell you, you look at fear in your eyes. It's... I've never seen bookings quite like it. Uh, the sheer volume of guests we're serving, these 12 dishes too. Uh, it's pretty scary. I've heard these like tech giants talk about scaling up and the sort of art of scaling up and now I get why they put so much emphasis on it. This look in the staff's eyes, now the chefs are just terrified. You know like in Lord of the Rings where they're just like waiting for war and there's that Merry and Pippin and they're just terrified and Gandalf has to like share some wise words to like calm them down. I'm like terrified myself but like just like yes everything's gonna be great.